welcome back to another edition of the Change My Mind podcast. I won't change my mind because I don't have to because I'm an American. Yes, you are. And I'm Wesley Sykes. And through the other side of the ether is the Professor X to my Magneto. It's Mr. Nicholas J. Esquire, mutant for hire. Okay. I think that one, I think I can get behind in that one. That that makes a lot of sense. I like Magneto more. I, I it still, still have yet to wear uh, throughout this whole, this whole X-Men gauntlet that we've done, but I could see that. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, you, you're the more true, true good guy, you know, here. I, I think I can probably walk the line a little bit more. There we go. Okay. This is, uh, this, uh he was um, very manipulative, manipulative in the movies that we, well, yeah, in both of them in, 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 in the movie we're talking about today. Uh, yeah, I would agree. And I would say change back to your other mic because it just started happening again. <laughs> uh, a little peek behind the curtain. For whatever reason, uh, Nick's mic is is going AWOL on us, and we think we got it figured out. And then just as soon as we hit live, uh, it crapped out again for whatever reason. So well, now we're all set. Now we're good. Okay, you sound good. Uh, you look good, yes. and hopefully you feel good because court is back in session this week as we hold a twist on the original versus sequel debate featuring X Two, X Men United, and uh, X Men Days of Future Past. Yeah, that kind of works, right? It's X Men Month here. We can use that. Yeah. Uh, but before that, Nick, we got to get down to brass tacks here. I need uh, the important questions answered. We are in election season, after all. Uh, where do you have steak tips in your cut of beef rankings? Wow. Uh, hmm. This is this is a tough one. I definitely had a, my fair share of steak tips over the years. Um, God, I feel like I'm like gonna be missing some on there, but it's probably. Hmm. I'd probably say it's middle of the pack because I feel like it's very versatile because one thing that's so clutch about steak tips is if you take home leftovers, which I do try to do a fair amount so I can have, mm-hmm. you know, at least an appetizer, if not a second meal later on, because the, the, the serving sizes we get are insane um, at For most sure. restaurants, but uh, they are, they can turn into finger food if you're eating by yourself mm-hmm. at home. So it's a nice little, it, 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 I, the, I'm getting, giving it some points for versatility. Uh, so when you say middle of the pack, is that like five out of 10, 10 I, out of 20, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pin you down to a number here. I, I don't know what number to give you. So we have, you have filet mignon, you have New York strip steak, um, maybe a ribeye, ribeye, a flank steak, flank steak. Yep. The, see, like, this is where I'm like, I, I, I just, I don't know if you just put it in that group. I, f- I think this is where like my, my palate's not immensely refined when it comes to those <laughs> things. So I, I feel comfortable saying if that's what that was five that we just laid out there, I feel fine putting that at like three just because of its versatility. It's, it's pretty high in my rankings here. Uh, peek behind the, the curtain once again. Uh, I've had wow. steak tips like the last five times I've been out to eat. It's, uh, it's a good staple. It, it, no matter where you go, you know you're going to get like it, it can't really – can't really screw it up that bad maybe you get some mashed potatoes with it maybe you get some asparagus maybe you get a nice like hoisin asian glaze to it which is really nice and Mm -hmm. i do something a little bit different with the steak tips i usually i I go medium rare for my steaks but steak tips i like them a little bit more uh cooked through i like it like a medium so you get that char on the edge hopefully but they're still tender on the inside gotcha so i just pulled up more steaks there's porterhouse Kansas sure. City Strip, T-Bone, Tomahawk. Uh, another one, shame on me, that I, I blanked on, Portuguese uh, style, mm-hmm. like which I don't think is on this list that I'm looking at, but that is... Pr- what is Portuguese style? Educate me here. You've never... It's just the type of sauce that you so. use. It's definitely oh, yeah. a, a little bit uh, a little bit of a thinner steak, longer steak. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the size that it usually comes in, but there, I can't believe you went to school in Dartmouth and you never had a Portuguese... No, I've never, I've never heard of it. Never heard of that before. Yeah. So, oh. you know, I, I got the coffee milk, uh, you know, I've had a, I had a sardine, a whole sardine before, you know, I've done some Portuguese things, but never a Portuguese steak. Coffee milk's a Portuguese thing. I think so. I think, I think it's, uh, like mostly a South, South coast of Massachusetts, like Southeastern Massachusetts thing in Rhode Island. Didn't which, know that. 
by product is just a Portuguese thing because it's yes. so many. So maybe right. maybe I'm putting the cart before the horse there. Yeah, that would make sense though. But I uh, I'd have to I have to ask the missus because I didn't know that was a thing. But yeah, so knowing that if I throw in those other those other types in there, that's what like I've never had Kansas City. I don't think I've ever had Tomahawk or T Bone, but Porterhouse I have. So yeah. prob- probably moves up, uh, moves moves down slightly on my list because Portuguese also is, mo- is ahead of that. I'm a bit of a basic bitch. I love a fillet, nice and tender, lean meat. Uh, you know, I'm not crazy. I like some marbling on my steak when it comes to uh, a sirloin or a ribeye or something like that. But they can it can get too much, and I end up just cutting around it and then cutting up the fat pieces for my dog. Uh, oh. So I can eat the whole fillet. So that's probably uh, where I would go number one. Then probably uh, I would go ribeye. Then I would go steak tips number three because of that versatility, like like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And, and they're just so good everywhere. They're affordable. More often than not, it's a poor man's mm-hmm. rich meal. Uh, but I also like uh, skirt steaks. Oh, Very yeah. long and thin. They're great for tacos. Uh, you know, you put some black diamond uh, um, seasoning sauce together, which is kind of like a soy sauce, Worcestershire type sauce mm-hmm. combination. Uh, it's it's really good, but yeah, so uh, definitely top five uh, for for the steak tips for me. I'll tell you what, in terms of like um, the way it's like the consistency, Portuguese style steak is probably closest to skirt as, as you're bringing. Okay, up. all yeah. right. Uh, flank steak also a pretty thin thin steak as well, I believe. Mm-hmm. But um, you'll know better than I do when you try it. I can't what was it. I, I was going to say? So you you spent some time in the Midwest. You know, I've only really spent time in the Northeast, which to my understanding is where steak tips are most prominent. Uh, I, I thought this was like, you know, really? a good thing to have every on every menu, but people don't will, really know it. I, I don't know. I feel like I saw, I feel like that was available out there. I feel like I definitely had it, but I, I will say we went to do, we definitely went to our share of steakhouses like as a team and like that it would bring recruits to this specific steakhouse too. I, I got brought there as a recruit and you got like, you know, that you were told, like, get the nicest thing on the menu because it's, like, being paid for. And, sure, and, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. So I can't, I don't know if, I, like, I think that's where I was introduced to, like, Porterhouse and these, like, other fancier type of steaks. Because I feel like I always got, if I got Yeah, steak, you was, wouldn't have steak tips in a in a steakhouse, I don't think. Right. So I I, I don't know if outside of that, though, I would have. <laughs> you never ate at any other restaurants in, in Chicago or anything like that? Because, just no, only, no. only went to steakhouses? No, what I was going to say is we pre- like as like you know as individuals we tried a bunch of different places, but I probably didn't get steak a whole hell of a lot. But what I will say is we pretty much either went to a really nice place or we got like Subway or Olive Garden. Like gotcha. I've been I've been to Olive Garden once since college. I don't fuck around with that shit. Like I love Olive Garden. It's got a secret, secret little spot in my heart for it, uh, and probably in my ulcer as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's not good food, but it's it's sometimes it's so good. Get a little tour of Italy on a cold day, you know, like when you just want to hunker down and not do anything. Hey man, I used to love it, but I had it way too much in uh, in college. That and Subway, I don't I don't fuck with either of those anymore. No, I don't go to Subway anymore either. Uh, I did get Jersey Mike's recently. There's one right by mm-hmm. me. Uh, not not too bad, pretty good, solid, solid. I'll go yeah. back. Yeah, it's okay. But um, but yeah, in terms, I, I I couldn't tell you like other than like I feel like I, I generally just got steaks when we went to like nice ass restaurants because in college too, like you don't have any money. So you're like, yes, you know, you're trying to get as much as you as much bang for your buck. So pretty much unless I took even then when I took my I feel like any time I took my girlfriend in college out, it was probably to, like Italian. Um, sure. Yeah. More reasonably priced like the spot in town that was like nice. And again, you get something, you know, some bang for your buck. Usually you're getting heaping helpings. I'm, I'm exactly. imagining it's like a family Italian, not like, uh, uh, you know, classic italian neapolitan mm-hmm. like they hand make the pasta and everything there was one place that was more like that and there was another place that actually was probably even more family style but was crazy about it west and i think actually they have maggiano's at maggiano's in um boston if i'm not mistaken but the one that okay. i they had outside i don't think it was in chicago but just outside certain meals if you got that you would also get like a, the, a, 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 um, another one like another helping to like take a take home, home meal yes. oh man basically buy one get one and anytime my mom came out to visit it was like we're going here she loves italian food but also mm-hmm. it's like you're getting a free meal out of this so like we don't it's not a choice so you would get four meals essentially 
uh, I would like basically four extra meals. Basically, the two of us would get four meals, and she would give me the like the extra one that she was getting too. Yeah, so uh, I would get three meals. That's great stuff. I, I love that. That that that's a good deal. Between that and the never ending pasta special mm. at uh, Olive Garden, you're all set. You're a nice yep. nice carb filled boy. Yep, a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> never ending. That's right. Yeah. That is that is a good uh, thing there. That's, that's what I'm, unlimited soup salad and breadsticks. A lot of things are. You become Mister Unlimited at, at the Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, it's that, uh, that should have been like a an easy uh, advertisement yeah. uh, deal with, with Russell Wilson. Oh, with Russell, I was actually thinking it's Mister J- Unlimited. Oh, well, yeah, that would have been a good idea, but yeah, he's a little washed up, so. Yeah, I, I was just more saying because he's Mr. Unlimited, or yes. that's what he calls himself. Yes, no, I understand. I got it. I'm just shitting on Russell Wilson. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, let's get to your comic book minute here right now. Ah, a superb choice. So we got the finale of Kill Your Darlings this week. This is an image comic mm. uh, that's been outstanding. One of the best books on the shelves is actually, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, when I look at the review copies, I see 60 pages, but I think like that's running for the cover, you know, the credits page, all that kind of stuff. But it's a, it's a, at least a double sized finale. Uh, so you guys are not going to get shorted whatsoever with this issue. Really happy with how they ended things. Uh, from Boom, we got the first issue of Blown Away, which is basically where we have this photographer who she's in like this Arctic tundra type place, trying working on getting pictures and she's witness to a murder. Um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, you know, other things are going to unfold in this first issue. Um, and of course throughout the series and then from Marvel, uh, the big one that's coming back this week is ghost rider final vengeance mm. issue two. Um, we found out it, it's not a spoiler at this point now, because it came at the end of last issue and we're seeing it on the, the main cover. Uh, the hood is actually taken on the mantle of the spirit of vengeance. So we'll, oh. see, we'll see if that's permanent. We'll see if that's just a short term thing, but very excited for what this issue is going to uh, turn into. And then as for TLDR this week, uh, Joe is talking dark, excuse me, dark spaces dungeon uh, by Scott Snyder and Hayden Sherman. And then I am going to be talking rogue in gambit in light of uh, recent events on X-Men, the animated series 97. I would love get, to get a little update on your thoughts on X-Men 97. Would you like yeah. to do it right now? Or you want to hold off until the Discharge Depot? Let's yeah, – no, fuck it. We're doing all X-Men stuff, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about it now. You're, I mean, tough tough blow for my guy here. I mean, you're, you're going through it. So it's really I – ha- I mean, I have like um, two, two like major feelings on it. One, yes, like I'm sad to see – like spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't watched episode five. Yes. If you haven't yet and you haven't got stuff spoiled – What are you doing? Hop- I don't. I don't know how. Yeah, I'd like to know what you're doing because I need. I need to know how the fuck to deal with that. Um, make that happen. But so seeing Gambit die, it, it, it's sad. Like I, I just, you know, it's just tough because he's my favorite character. And with this show, I don't know what they're gonna do. I do see like there's definitely a path to get that taken care of and get it like bring him back. But at the same time, my other feeling is like I am so pumped for him because he had like. I was a like, good way it, to go out. What a fucking action sequence. Yeah. And for, for a guy who's like constantly like, you know, looks so much less than next to his, his girlfriend, wife, depending on what you're reading, what you're watching, like his girl, like rogue, she is just so overpowered. And he's just like, Oh, I can charge this, charge this stuff kinetically. And it looks cool. And I love it. Don't get me wrong, but it's easy to pick on, especially when compared to, to rogue sure then then when she can't get it done magneto can't get it done and he's about to die he comes through and gets it done completely and at at his own you know the cost of his life but i couldn't have asked for like a better ending for a character because all these characters die at some point yeah and and you you know you alluded to it maybe there's a way that some of these characters come back uh and, and that may happen but i think in the moment it's great to to kill your heroes, right? I mean, our our, our guy Billy D always talks about that. I think it's uh, great from a storytelling aspect. I think Marvel and DC has, for the most part, shied away from that. Um, so adding big stakes to your show uh, just by doing that, right? Because it, it's it's Magneto too, right? Yep, Magneto is up in the air more so still, but yes, it is those two. Yeah, and and there were some other people who. Um, some other like important side characters, like the leader of the moral and I'm blanking on her name right now. They said it in the episode, but um, she seems to have died. So it's quite a few. I think if Gambit gets saved, it's not just going to be him 
who gets saved in the process. They'll probably mm-hmm. find a way to, you know, days of future past it, if you will. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it, it was, I have like so many conflicting thoughts about this episode because for the first, you know, 25 minutes, I thought it was kind of slow moving and they do a lot to kind of build up that thruple between Roe, Gambit, and Magneto. And then you get the uh, other thruple with Madeline Pryor and Jean Grey and, and Cyclops <sighs> in there. But, you know, it's like, everything's supposed to be so serious, but I can't help but laugh at the idea of like Cyclops getting caught in a psychological love affair. (laughs) You know, I think that's like kind of, kind of ridiculous. Apparently that happens in the comics from what I've heard, but you know, and then, and then for Jean Grey to be so upset after she just physically kissed uh, Logan. And then she's like, you're doing what in the, you know, astral realm or whatever it is, you know, it seemed a little like over the top, but I, I can appreciate building up uh the emotional stakes for that huge you know needle drop so to speak at the end uh which again i thought was you know the best part of the episode but i'm also like conflicted like it's kind of weird that a car- cartoon is invoking 9-11 you know like kind of a weird thing uh you know they, they definitely did i lose west here i think i did that's oh. unfortunate I, I think I did lose you there for a second, but yeah, uh, when they're like showing the newscast at the end, like that was very reminiscent of nine uh, eleven. Uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of a weird thing. Um, I, I still wonder who this show is really for. Sorry, I was I was trying to figure out who got lost there. Um, but I either way, did, yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen it like mentioned elsewhere. Like it's. Yeah, it's like a part of history. So, I mean, it's going to get like other stuff gets brought up and that's going to happen. So, yeah, it is. um, Great take. I (laughs) I don't I don't like it's there. Like, I I feel like I saw it. I saw it mentioned in um, I've mentioned the title Vanish a lot in the past. um, And it's an image comic series. And they they talked about it there and they 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 brushed up against it in a way where I was like, whoa, like you really like you went right up against the line and you, you like, like blew it a kiss and then, and then walked away unscathed. So, I mean, I just know like that stuff's going to get brought up now. Yeah. Again, I just think it's like, uh, you know, if if we ever get, if we do get to talk to uh, you know, if if we do have a guest on in the coming weeks, I would love to ask like, who is this show for in your, in your opinion, you know, cause I, I, I would like to hear what their mindset is. Um, you know, when they're putting the show together and what, what they're intending for their audience when they're put, you know, writing everything and making all the scenes. I, I wouldn't be stunned if they said, I mean, okay, this is how I feel about it. At least the, when I watched X-Men as a kid, I always felt like I was watching something like where I was kind of getting away with watching something that was like a little bit too, like it was dealing with more than what I'm used to dealing with. Like it was more mature in a way, but it was still a kid show. And that's what I, always, one of the things I always found so cool about it. And I think that's just in general, what the X-Men are so good about, good at. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get something like that, but that's just, that could be just me projecting as well. Yeah. Like who, like, you know, the, uh, the, the sports demo is like what, 18 to 40 males or something like that. 18 to 50 males. Right. When you talk about like sports talk radio or just sports in general, like that's usually the target audience. Like I wonder if they have, you know, what their target audience is in, in mind when they're putting all this together. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, I'd be very curious um, what their answer is on that. Uh, but yeah, so that, that's, that's X-Men 97. Again, it's X-Men month. We're, we're talking about it all nonstop here. Go back through our last few episodes. We, we do the X-Men character draft. What, what did we do the week before there, Nick? We did the X-Men character draft. We did the tier rankings for all the X-Men, X-Men movies. live action movies. Yes. And now, uh, as we get to our main topic here, wait, wait for it. Right, that's our uh, original versus sequel with a little bit of a twist here. We're doing uh, X2, X-Men United, and X-Men Days of Future Past, arguably the two best movies in their respective trilogies. Uh, And we're going to break it down to see, you know, maybe if you had an alien come down from space and you wanted to introduce uh, the X-Men to them, which movie would you show? That's kind of how we were operating here uh, in in that mindset. But before we get to the debate, 
Uh, Nick, what's the tale of the tape for X2 X-Men United? Yeah, so X2 came out in 2003, the synopsis, when anti-mutant Colonel William Stryker kidnaps Professor X and attacks his school, the X-Men must ally with their arch enemy Magneto to stop him. Uh, as for the cast and crew, this is di directed by Brian Singer, starring Patrick Stewart, of course, as Charles Xavier, Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, Ian McKellen, Famke Jensen, James Marsden, Anna Paquin, Rebecca... Rebecca Romain, but it's Rebecca Romain. Romain, yep, it's, Stamos, yeah. right? Or no. Yeah, at the at that time it was Romain Stamos, I believe. But she's dropped go. the Stamos. Okay. I didn't know that's how you said her last name. I know you've said it like it's three weird. times. Yeah, it, it's spelled weird. This. Yeah. But and, um, anyways, Brian Cox, Alan Cumming, uh, Bruce Davison, Aaron Stamford, Sean Ashmore, Katie Stewart, Kia uh Ki Wong, and Cotter Smith. And then as for the box office and critics reception, this hauled in. 407.7 million worldwide, including 214.9 million domestic, uh, 85.5 million its opening weekend on a $110 million budget, uh, received a 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb and an 85-80 split on Rotten Tomatoes, 4.5 out of 5 on Google Reviews with 85% of Google users liking this movie. That brings us to X-Men Days of Future Past. What do you got for me, Wes? Yeah, the uh, the box office and critics reception for X2 has a lot of 85s there. There's a weird synchronicity there. 85 million on the opening weekend. 85, 85 split in Rotten Tomatoes. 85% of us Google users like this movie. It's hmm. kind, of, kind of a weird oddity. It is odd, yeah. Uh, but Days of Future Past, this came out in 2014. The X-Men send Wolverine to the past in a desperate effort to change history and prevent an event that results in doom for both humans and mutants. Uh, this is also directed by Brian Singer and also starring uh, Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier, Hugh Jackman as Logan Wolverine, uh, James McAvoy as Professor Charles Xavier, Michael Fassbender as Magneto, uh, who, who else do we have? We got Ian McKellen also playing Magneto. Jennifer Lawrence as Raven or Mystique. Halle Berry as Storm. Nicholas Holt as Hank McCoy and Beast. Uh, Anna Paquin as Rogue. Uh, Elliot Page as Kitty Pride. Peter Dinklage as Dr. Bolivar Trask. Sean Ashmore as Bobby Drake, the Iceman. Omar Sy as our guy Bishop. Uh, Evan Peters might be a low-key MVP of this movie as Quicksilver. Uh, James Hellman is Major Bill Stryker, a younger William Stryker. Uh, Daniel Cudmore is Colossus. Bing Bing Fan is Blink. And Adam Canto as Sunspot. This movie hauled in uh, 746 million worldwide, including uh, just a shade under 234 million domestic, with a 90.8 opening weekend. All of that on a $200 million budget. So they made a little bit of money there, I would say. Mm. Uh, receiving a 7.9 out of 10 on uh, IMDb with a 90-91 split on Rotten Tomatoes. And a 4.7 out of 5 on Google Reviews. While 83% of Google users like this movie. Nice. Yeah. Both uh, both the clearly the crown jewels of their eras of live action X-Men movies. There's no doubting that. Um, but uh, it's good. And what, gonna... 2003, I, I should have looked at the other movies, like the other uh, superhero movies that came out in that time, but that's Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. It's like right around that time, right? Yeah, that's all in that era. Yeah, that one. And then we probably would have gotten Blade 2 already by that point, because I think... Well, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't really care about that so much, but I'm just saying like the big temple ones. Because when I think of Days of Future Past... 2014 was a pretty big year, right? I feel like Captain America Winter Soldier was on that. 2014 might have might have also been Guardians of the Galaxy mm. uh, right around time. So it's like they're competing with a lot of other strong movies uh, within their comic book industry at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. it was definitely at that point in time, it was definitely tougher for X-Men movies. But First Class had definitely pu pushed things in the right direction for... Uh, for the X-Men, but then, and then this of course ran with it. Um, but it, kind of similar how those, I, I feel like with those first two, with those, uh, with, e with each era of the live action X-Men. Absolutely. Absolutely here. So just to refresh everyone at home, uh, we're going to each have 60 seconds to present our opening arguments. Uh, and then we'll each have 60 seconds for our four debate questions with an option to retort to our response for 30 seconds. If we like some decline, some, 
sometimes we use that 30 seconds to roll into a, a larger argument that we would like to make into our 60 seconds there. But it is up to uh, the lawyer, the prosecutor, the defendant, you know, wh- whoever it may be, how they want to use their time. Yep. hundred uh, percent. Nick, I, I think I won the last one. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm going to give you the option if you would like to uh, go first or, or go second here. You, you, you can go first because I think the last debate that we had, I went first. Um, okay. So I'll allow you to open the floor on this I, one. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, I don't think I was very prepared for that last one. So I don't, I'm not sure if I should say I won that, but never. We didn't put a poll out. So I that's thought you true. Were just I guess we'll never know. Yeah, I, I honestly just thought you were joking. So, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna go. You know, jokes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was joking. That's that's exactly right. <laughs> Not at all serious. <laughs> uh, do you have the timer set up? Yeah, I do. So you got a minute on the clock to open things up. Okay. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, and fine esteemed individuals of the jury, uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, the 2014 movie, is based on Uncanny X-Men's number one, number 141 and number 142, uh, written by the acclaimed Chris Claremont. Claremont excuse me. Uh, this is an, uh, an homage. Wow, I can't talk right now. To the original trilogy, while considerably uh, advancing the story of the new trilogy. Days of Future Past does a fantastic job of connecting the two universes into one while right. offering some great ac- uh, action sequences. This is, in my opinion, a cleaner, easier to understand time travel movie than uh, Avengers Endgame, which I'll discuss a little bit more. Also has better CGI quality, uh, which allows for the opportunity to show what the X-Men can really do in a sophisticated and clean way. Uh, with its ending, nice. uh, it retcons X-Men 3, The Last Stand, Wolverine Origins, or so I've read, and even potentially parts of X2 with Fam K Jansen appearing at the end here. So, essentially... You were done. Uh, you were... You were yeah, I, I, I went over. I went over. Yeah, you, you did, but I, I couldn't... I forgot to get the, the sounder, so I wasn't... I did too much it. bullshitting at the top, you know? Yeah. I, I should have just went right into it. Well, it's, I mean, you, you always say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury... Um, and do your whole thing there. But I should have just ignored them. I uh, should have just ignored the jury. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you know, if I could do it all over again, I would. <laughs> um, I, I hope that's that's on the record still. No, no, off the record. You know, strike it from the record. Uh, stopwatch. Uh, bullshit. Okay. Okay, I'm ready when you are here. Okay. All right. Uh, go ahead and start the clock when you're ready. Three, two, one. So, obviously, as I mentioned before, two massive movies for X-Men for their properties. Obviously, movies, a a property that was squandered in a lot of ways by Fox. However, while Days of Future Past was huge for that second round of X-Men movies, X2, X-Men United, was massive for the superhero genre at a time where it was Blade started things off, then you get Spider-Man and the original X-Men movie. That was not necessarily the greatest piece of cinema, but what you go and get in X2 is what was built there. This ran with it. And then you go and get new characters thrown in the mix. You're allowed to flesh out and have better written storyline. 15 seconds. A greater villain, as much as Magneto is an awesome villain, he's also doing his own planning and plotting along the way. But you get a a new villain in Stryker who adds a lot. And then you get to flesh out more with with Jean Grey and Wolverine. One. Whew, that was close. Okay. All right. Okay. So we got the opening arguments out of the way. Uh, let's dive into the debate questions here. We have question number one: Which movie tells the better story? Simple one. Nice. Pretty and easy. simple. We'll ease into it here. Yep. I'll lead us off here. One minute. All right. Let me reset the yep. clock. Sixty seconds. On and, I, and I do one. want to do the one and thirty on this one. I'm. You do? Since, okay. Yeah. That I sounds like we, good. Like, we'll do the same. We, we were talking about it before, where it was like um, how it, it changes. Maybe whoever leads off gets to pick. Like whoever leads oh. off on that question gets to pick. Since, it, yeah. We could we could do that. It sounds good to me. Okay. okay. So we got sixty seconds on the clock. Why X two tells the better story, starting mm-hmm. right now. Okay, so Stryker as the lead villain and turning into this massive puppet master in this story is an awesome centerpiece for this for X2 X-Men United. And what they did also, too, is they took that character and modernized him 
for the comics where he was actually previously like Reverend uh, William Stryker. Um, then on top of that, we get to build lore with Wolverine and with Gene throughout the course of this movie, subtly setting the stage for more to be done with both seconds. of those characters beyond this movie. Obviously some of that stuff didn't go all that well later on, but the way things were set with both Wolverine's past and in Gene Gray's future were, were subtle, effective to the plot, but not beaten over the head with it. And then for me, while in the original movie, you have Magneto as the villain here, he's forced to be that he's has to become the ally and then is a villain Five, operating four, in the background until three, he has to be the villain. Absolutely two, loved it. So well done. One. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, 30 seconds on the clock for you to retort or pick apart um, my points on X2 as telling the better story. Three, two, one. So I think the retorts are going to be difficult for both of us because I think it's safe to say that we both enjoy each other's movie. Uh, maybe not more than our own, but I think there, there's a lot of love there. But I think what will uh, come through in my further arguments is how 15. not only does uh, Days of Future Pass, again, have everything of the previous okay. series, uh, but they have so much more to offer uh, in advancing the story, whether it's CGI I or telling a more complete story uh, through the writers, uh, Simon Kinberg there, but I'll, I'll just roll right into it. I you know, honestly fucking lost the font, the sounder. So I, Oh boy. Couldn't, where the hell is it? Uh, it's under morphin time. I, yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's not officially done to, 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 to the yeah, I, I can, I can roll right into my 60 second argument. If that's cool with you. One minute on the clock for you to explain why Days of Future Past tells the better story. Three, two, one. Uh, first of all, like I mentioned, the time travel aspect is top tier for the big screen, in my opinion. I don't think any other movie really does it that much better. It's very easy to understand, and it's a complex idea. Uh, they show the desolate future and the fearless mentality of the mut mutants, which I think is so cool because they don't fear death by the Sentinels because of the time travel. So they can kind of go all out there and you really see it allows for great action sequences. Uh, the notion of Trask, who we'll talk about a little bit later, getting his hands on Mystique's DNA to upgrade or perfect the Sen Sorry. Sentinels uh, is a well-executed ex classic trope of being uh, yourself being your own worst enemy in a lot of ways. Uh, they're facing an ex existential crisis and it shows. Plus, you get this, this really cool like history Easter eggs that Magneto mm. maybe killed JFK. Turns out he's actually a mutant he was trying to save. Uh, and they use all this like real world events that take place. You get the Vietnam War that plays a role. Richard Nixon playing a role. We Five. see RFK Stadium. Um, and, and correct some of the downfalls of the, the previous trilogy. <laughs> killing off Cyclops. <laughs> Three words. Three words. You know, you go over the word count. Those aren't getting no. cut. No, I was... <laughs> <laughs> I just think like the porn parodies get brought up fairly often in the DSG and Cyclops is one that like the name you can have fun with. But anyways, oh, well, of course, is that, is that what did it sound like I said Cyclops? Cox? No, no. But you also have uh, you also always have like, you know, over the past month, you've been Wesley Cyclops. So mm, there's mm -hmm. also that. So. There, that's true. It's my oh, guy. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm going to stand for my guy here. Yeah. Um, 30 seconds on why everything I just said was bullshit. Starts right now for Nick Fryer. Yeah. So, uh, look, uh, when it comes to this one, there are a lot of moving pieces. I think it, it it's well done in a lot of ways. But where the where X two is better is it does keep things a little bit simpler while raising a lot of questions. 15. And while this while X Days of Future Past is all about cleaning up a lot of messes in the past, not just from within the actual story, but the the mistakes Five, made it with four. Phoenix. Three, it's reliant too two, much on other things besides the actual one. plot. Ugh. That was tough. <laughs> that 30 seconds goes quick. It does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we got a uh, number question number two on our list. Which movie Might be my favorite features the better standout scene? Um, I, I obviously there are two. We know which ones jump to mind, but I'm, I, I was a little presumptuous when putting this, uh, you know, uh, question together. I assumed on your end who it would be, but you know, maybe maybe I was wrong on that. You're not wrong, but I have other things to bring up on top of that from just like awesome scenes. So we'll. So I'll just leave it. Well, at it that, is you know? the best singular standout scene. This is true. Not this plural. Is, 
This is very true. I have plenty on that. Don't get me wrong. I okay. have plenty on that. All right. Uh, so you are leading off on this one because I went first last time around. Do you want to do 60-30 or do you want to do full 90? No, no, no. Let's do 60-30. All right. 60 seconds on the clock. Three, two, one. Please note the old adage for everyone listening at home that if you have two Q- QBs, you don't have one. And that's essentially what Nick just laid out before we got started here. But Quicksilver's jailbreak of Magneto is the preeminent scene uh, to show off the speedster's powers. You know, it, it's essentially the same. He's he's what Barry Allen should have been in The Flash. He's annoying. He's quick. He's kind of ADHD. Uh, he's, he's a young kid in this. He's quirky. He's fun. Uh, but he's just way more palatable than uh, Ezra Miller's performance there. Pretty. This is also set to a great soundtrack, A Time in a Bottle by Jim, Jim Croce. Just a fantastic needle drop moment there. Uh, and it's a really an opportunity where Peter shows off the strength and control as powers at a relatively young age. And what's interesting, it's shown from okay. his perspective, uh, which is a change from when he is introduced, where he's kind of zipping around his basement. You see it from everyone else's uh, there. You get a great display of his powers from vibrating the glass on Magneto's cell to the whiplash comment saying his mom knew a guy who used to, you know, move metal, Pentagon guards in a prankster like fashion. It's more for time. Um, I I try to synop, you know, summarize that in 60 seconds there, but I'm not even sure if 60 seconds is enough time. Um, How long was that scene actually? I, I should have, good, I should have, I should have timed it when I was watching it. Earlier. That's that's a good point. That's a good point there. I would say it's over a minute from just the just the action bit like from, it, from the song moment. Yeah, it might no, be less than a minute. minute then. I don't know. Anyways, so I got thirty seconds, right? Uh, you have thirty seconds, and it starts right now. So I mean, the first thing is the, the biggest thing I should say is like this isn't even the best Quicksilver scene. That's like we get one later on in the next X-Men movie. And that's the one that people talk about more so now. And obviously that's part of the fact that that movie isn't all that great. So, wh- seconds. so while yes, you have that, you're also, we want to talk about citing, you know, uh, me bringing up two quarterbacks. You're citing things kind of outside of that scene. Just want to bring that attention Five, to, to everybody's four, attention as well. Three. All set. Thank you. Two, one. What do you mean? What, what did I bring up that wasn't his? In his- I, 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 I'm just grasping at straws here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that was very strong. Our, the, mm-hmm. Whatever happens in Apocalypse, it's not as good as what we get here. Uh, uh, that, that I don't know. I don't know about that. He's going across the whole building. I mean, they wanted to do it again, which is a credit to the, the quality of the scene. Of course. Well, they had to do it again. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, so now you get 60 seconds to explain uh, your favorite standout scene, scene, singular, mm-hmm. on X2. Let me reset the timer here. 60 seconds on the clock starts right now. So Nightcrawler wasn't just a great scene. It was a tone setter where you have this hype coming off of the original X-Men movie. And it's like, okay, how are you going to build on this? How are you going to make it better? And right away, it's like, oh, wow, this is a million times better because the CGI is nowhere where, like near where it is now. It wasn't even anywhere near where you got with Quicksilver in Days of Future Past. It's 10 years apart. And you have, th- and, and with this, they executed the powers of Nightcrawler so well. And it was like, it felt so you, uh, just like all the the um, Secret Service guys. You, you felt so out of control. But when you watch Kurt, of course, he is very much precise in 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 control throughout all of it. And for me, seconds. what's so important there too is you're introducing a character who loyal X fans X fans know. Obviously, they they they're going to care big time about how he's portrayed. But also, Five, you're you're um, four, those who aren't as three, familiar with him and know the other characters two, better it makes a one. huge impact on. Them. Whew, I almost didn't get that in there. Jeez. Ugh. Got a little tongue tied. Oh, tongue-tied yeah. Again. All right. I but, hear you. Yeah. We, we got to be on the ball here. I think, you know, I, I'm a little tongue tied myself today. Yes. Uh, well, I don't, I'm so quick to agree with you on that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, 30 seconds on the clock for you to shit talk Nightcrawler attacking a White House. Uh, three, two, one. Yeah. Th- this is tough because, like I said, there's so many things that I love about this movie, preeminently the Nightcrawler and the White House scene. I talked last week about how I had the X-Men uh, 97 toy uh, with him with the suction cups on there. So I was a big Nightcrawler fan. I also think this is like 
a great way to open a movie. I think that's probably what's working out for it in, in the best way. It's very yeah. early in the movie. It sets the tone right. Um, if I was Nick, that, that's what the argument that I would have gone with. It's a great tone setter for the movie. But, you know, he can't argue his way out of a paper bag. So. <laughs> are you are you serious? <laughs> yeah. You, that was legitimately the first thing I said. No, was, no, no, no. This wasn't just a great scene. It's a great tone setter. No, and that was a knock true. towards yours. No, no, Nick. Now you're putting words into your mouth retroactively. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Um, Maybe I should have listened closely. Anyways, um, <laughs> I I can't think of what the, the saying is with um, with Felger and Mazzo. When it's the hosts day. aren't listening. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Yes. There you go. Simple. There you go. I was listen. focused too much on the on the clock. Oh yes, of course. What's the side <laughs> clocks? Excuse me. Oh whoa uh, whoa whoa! <laughs> not a thing. To, not a thing to mess up. Um, all right. So uh, question number three it goes turns back to me. Which movie did a better job of conveying the core X Men? Yes. So, do we want to do we want to clarify this at all? Or do you have you have your argument? I mean, I just assumed like the core X Men for their respective movies. But if we want to do, uh, you know, the crossover uh, characters, yeah. Um, I mean, I have a lot of notes on this like a healthy so amount of notes wherever whatever direction you want to go with i just wasn't sure if we want to clarify it doesn't matter to me whatever you prep for is yeah. good yeah i mean we we talked before about different ways we could have gone about it but i, I think this is just this like if we go we, we could have done like broken this this question down into like three more and we would have just been here too long uh, yeah, so. yeah 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 absolutely there okay so you're 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 starting us off right mm-hmm Okay, 60 seconds on why X2 conveys the X-Men better than Days of Future Past right now. So one of the big things for me is you have better use of certain characters throughout these movies. You have a better use of Wolverine. You have a better use of Mystique. And I know Wolverine does go back in the past, and obviously that's significant. But what's so great about Wolverine in, in X2 is he has the Metal Claw still, which it's infinitely sexier than his bone claws um and then on top of that you get to see him go full berserker mo berserker mode where he's very much more of a a wild card in that movie because he goes after all of strikers guys takes them out when they invade the house seconds. and then he leaves striker to die i, I spent a lot of time wolverine but obviously massively important better use of mystique when she gets that guy the, the prison guard into the bathroom when she seduces him amazing that is perfect use of her power and that's to get Magneto out. And that's the other scene that was seconds. awesome. Amazing use of Magneto's power. Amazing use of Magneto in general, where he can be an ally, but you absolutely can't trust that guy. Um, and then on top of that, too, Five, we get the abuse of Kitty, Colossus, four, Nightcrawler. Three, we talked about him a ton. Two, of Great range of characters. One. Talked a lot of Wolverine, but it's necessary. Yeah, I mean, there. I mean, in both cases, he's such a huge aspect in both movies, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, he is the he like when you think of X Men movies, it's Hugh Jackman's the first guy you think of. It's no, it's no, it's not even a question. Um, all right, so you have thirty seconds on the clock to say why X Two X Men United uh, was uh, didn't do a good job or good enough job <laughs> of conveying the core X Men. Thirty seconds. Three, two, one. Yeah, it's not that I think that X2 didn't do a good job of conveying uh, what the core X-Men are all about here. I think we just get a wider range, a wider bandwidth in Days of Future Past. We get old and young uh, Charles Xavier, old and young Magneto. You know, we get old and young, in a sense, uh, Wolverine. You know, and then we get a full cast of characters that were present uh, like during the 90s, X-Men, uh, X-Men 97 series that I think uh, makes it more enjoyable experience for me rather than your your group of X Men. I was like, oh, am I gonna let him go a little longer? I'd let you go over a couple seconds just so you know. <laughs> oh, just nice! So that, was, that was sweet of you there. Yes, yeah, I thought um, you were closing in on the end, so I was, like, hey, I, I was landing. I was I was getting I was taxiing. You know, I was getting yep. right down to it. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, sixty seconds on the clock for Days of Future Past here. Yes, which does a better job of conveying the core X Men three. Mm -hmm. Two, one. Yeah, I mean, building off of what, what I was just saying, you know, not only do you get the older and younger versions of Eric and Charles, but you get this like, really cool group of X-Men that really gets a uh, uh, time to show their powers in like the most extreme ways possible. You get Blink, Warpath, Sunspot, Bishop, Colossus, and Quicksilver. Uh, and like I said, everyone really has a moment to just showcase their full power set 
because their lives and the, the world depend on it. You're uh, when they're going up against these like crazy sentinels. Um, you get the complicated friendship between Eric and Charles. And again, that's displayed, uh, displayed on two different timelines there. You have Wolverine being a classic badass, albeit not in like a typical fashion, like berserker type fashion that Nick mentioned. But you also get the best mm-hmm. use of Mystique here, probably into the Jer- Jennifer Lawrence era, uh, where she's like that wild card, uh, good, bad. You don't really know. She's not really on any team I- there. And she's utilized really well here. Um yeah, that's that's it. I also uh, didn't, I didn't mention uh, Kitty Pride, but yeah, I was gonna, I was like, okay, he's there. I'm like, he yeah. like also like, wait a minute, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kitty Kitty Pride was there, and what what I didn't know about this, and you know, it, it was like reading some um, or watching some YouTube videos, it kind of does like the Easter egg thing, all that kind of stuff, the new rock star type stuff, um, and they were talking about Days of Future Past. And they said that there's a rogue cut. Are you familiar with this? Yeah. Yep. That's See, I never true. knew that there was a longer cut. I, re- I remember just one day watching on HBO or whatever. I'm like, I don't remember these scenes in here. It's like a little more rogue, a little more Bobby. Uh, and I'm mm-hmm. like, wow, this Iceman stuff is like really sick what they're doing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So I, I thought that was really cool. But I, 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 ne- I didn't know that that was like a director's cut, like Batman v Superman sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, um, I think... I think with the first X Men, also I have like a I like the DVD that my dad had was X Men One and a Half. I think is oh. what it was to like the extended edition. Um, but yeah, it, it, by the way, I was blown away when I went to go watch Days of Future Past in preparation for this. Didn't realize it wasn't on Disney Plus. That it was the only one. Yeah, HBO Max. It's the only one. I wonder why that is. Probably because they're still getting a decent chunk of change, and probably because HBO sees value in it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I guess I, so. That's the only reason I can think of. And when you own those movies, so if you're Disney, right, like you own all the rights, so you, I assume you're leasing that out to HBO Max. I believe that's how it works. Yeah, I believe yeah. The, the streaming service pays for it. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah. All right. Good for them. Good for 30 them. seconds for me. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. 30 seconds to tear apart. My answer uh, starts right now. So. Well, Days of Future Past gives you a look at all these characters that we've seen in other in other X Men stories over the years. Where you're talking comics, um, the the comics, we it's more of like we're spraying. We get like little clips, little moments of all of them, and it's very cool. Fifteen seconds. But in X Two, while we we get to dig into a lot more of these characters and some characters who we've seen on the big screen, some characters who we hadn't, like a Nightcrawler or maybe Mystique, where in various ways we get to dig into them or put them on center stage and put them in different positions like a magneto or a wolverine one that was like the first like retort where i was like yes like this is i got it it's it's all clicking for me up here what i I wanted to say came out of my mouth it it gives me a great amount of respect for people who do live broadcasting because i know they're just reading from a teleprompter in some cases but in some cases you've got to be on the fly yeah it's um I, I had to do a couple of um NBA games recently, uh, mm-hmm. I guess this season, and it was like I was like, oh, like this is something I never wanted to do. And like I'm not I'm like I, the first time it was a lot easier the third time than the first, but wow, is it hard. Yeah, and even doing like like play by play stuff when you That's have I mean. like all the information in front of you, you know, like I, I remember like filling in for someone when I was interning on the Cape League. And like doing a radio broadcast, even then, it's not like you have to worry about anyone watching you or like you can literally read from, you know, the media guide or something. But it's still you have like you're inundated with all this information. You don't really know where to go. And, every, and then baseball moves still sl- it's like so slow, but it's still pretty fast. Yeah, it's just it, I, I don't think, you know, it's funny enough. I don't think I've ever broadcasted uh, in, in a baseball game ever. I've done football like high school football and then basketball I've done high school and I've done NBA it, it's, but it's so like when I did the play by play for like high school basketball, I was like, Holy shit. Like, yeah. I was getting money. So like, that's why I wasn't saying I was, I was saying yes to it, but it was also like, Oh, this is like uh, people who do this, man. Like it is such a tough job. Like in, in play, and being an analyst is tough too. Don't get me wrong. But to me, it's just like night and day. Uh, which one's easier and which one's not yeah absolutely I've, I've done like high school hockey games with uh you know my old co-worker there rich mm-hmm. and I, you know he does he would do the play-by-play and i would do the commentary and even in the commentary as like the b-roll you know you, you don't really like, you know i'm not a huge hockey guy so you know, some would, of I, I, I've, I've never seen before 
And it's like you're getting the rosters for the first time. And you're like, all right, well, this guy's got 36 points. And a nice dangle by him on the right slot. You know, it's like, how many times can you like use your, uh, use your go-to phrases? I can't imagine having to do that with a sport. You don't like, like you're not, it's not your forte. Like I would never like, that's good on you for doing that. You know, those like high school hockey, like the playoff games, you know, if they're at Gallo or wherever, like they're back to back to back to back. So you, you get the time, you know, as, uh, as long as it takes for the uh, Zamboni to clean the ice and then the next game's going. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's like a full schedule of games on a Saturday, you know, I, and I did, a, I actually did a lot of hockey writing at the standard times when I was there too, which was, I actually had fun with. I, no, I, learned, fun games. I learned a I just, lot. Yeah, for sure. It's just like, still just, it's just not my speed. It's not well, for me there's a big difference in writing about something and then having to do a, a broadcast of a game. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's not even, you close. you have time to figure out what you want to say to sound smart. Like, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, in doing like a, a show like this where you, but like for sports, we have to break stuff down. I, exponent, in my opinion, I mean, you've done a lot more than I have, you know, c- calling a game, but I feel like it's just exponentially easier, at least in the analyst role. Cause you're doing a lot less. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I would agree with that for sure. And, and you can give your opinion, like yeah, like, like when you're doing play by play, we're going way off the rails here. But you're like trying to paint the picture. Oh yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yeah. yes. You know, and it's like you're trying to make sure every detail, and you're thinking of like what the audience is hearing you when you say or or, or whatever. You know, you want to make sure it matches what they're seeing. Yeah, you, know, you you know, an analyst is like, all right, I've got these stats that I want to bring. You know, uh, and 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 I can got these talking points here. So if I can yeah. remember that, I'm good, and I can lean on those talking points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> but hey, kudos to you because I'm not sure if I could handle the the bright lights of a, a TV uh, TV set. So yeah, thanks. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get back to the debate question where where we hate each other. I can't believe uh, we did hockey. That is, <laughs> that is tough. Yeah, well, you know, it's an opportunity. Yeah, it's like two hundred bucks. No, of course, bucks. Like, of course. Right, dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the radio, the radio money for the high school stuff was probably the best paying stuff that I had. Yeah, in in comparison, right? Yeah, yeah. Because not only that, like we would like for for writing about a game that like, we have to, we don't, we, we the job doesn't end when the game's done. Like you have to do more yep. afterwards and actually write the damn thing. Whereas when you're calling a game, game's done, you're pretty much done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're the big shot on campus there too. Yeah. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, yes, we, we have gone off the rails, but um, I'm glad we went off the rails. Uh, yeah, it's good. That was an important conversation that the audience needed to know. For us, at least. Um, but uh, so we got one more question left for X-Men uh, United, ver- X- X2 X-Men United versus X-Men Days of Future Past. The better villain. Um, you are leading us off on this one, Weston. Obviously, it's loaded. It's not like we just have one villain in each of these, but. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is this will be pretty good here. I'm excited for it. 60 30 or 90? Um let's do 60 30. All right, sounds good. Three, two, one. So yeah, for Days of Future Past, I think the uh villain is clearly um Bolivar Trask and his Sentinels, uh, which is very interesting. The Sentinels are super powered at this point. They don't have to even communicate. If one sentinel gets absorbs the power, they all do. So that's shown pretty cool between the sunspot and Iceman scenes where uh, those Sentinels kind of use the powers against them to, that would be, you know, the exact opposite of the element that they are Uh, very cool. But Magneto also has his heel turn moment. uh, And that's truly badass when he's ripping up RFK stadium, tearing out the bunker of the white house, uh, throwing Wolverine into the Potomac river. And then of course, this is like a classic Magneto moment, right? It's when he takes all the guards okay. guns and turns them against him. I'm sure that's in your movie. I'm sure that's in X-Men. I'm sure that's in the last stand and, and uh, first class and everything else as well. Right. So uh, very, very cool. But Trask and the human element here is what I think mm-hmm. makes it uh, most interesting. Look at that. Whoa. The, it took the, it took four questions, but we finally nailed it right on, <laughs> on the nose there. <laughs> All right. I will, uh, I will take my 30 seconds to uh, break your stuff down. All uh, right. That starts right now. So while Bolivar Trask is very much a major concern throughout all of this and obviously the lead villain in a lot of ways. And like you mentioned, you have Magneto in the background and obviously uh, Mystique has got her own thing going on too. I do feel like a lot of what pushes 
the plot of this movie is the good guys, like the, everything that's going on with them. Whereas like, you just know what Trask has done because of the Sentinels and the Sentinels are obviously there in, in the, in the future, mm -hmm. but they're not put, they're like more of a device and less fleshed Five. out than, than in my Four. movie, which I'll break, get into Three. in a second. All Two, set. One. Thank you. Got to play you, that. Gotta you, can play roll, you can roll right into um, my. All house. right. You're 60 seconds. It starts right now so obviously we have lady deathstrike who plays as like the the lesser bad in this one which, which is kind of cool i've talked about how she wasn't done necessarily the best in terms of justice towards the comics magneto who ends up being the ultimate chess player and all this very cool and i love what they did with him here but striker is the major villain here and he is very much pushing everything along throughout the story he does a great job in terms of like taking control of the mutants utilizing that it's very much like a uh it, it's very much of a problem and then throughout the course of it you get the link with him Three and seconds. wolverine that's pushing things and making you wonder what's going on with logan what has he done in his past we know it's checkered but you don't know and it's, he has a much more prominent presence throughout the course of the movie like an active presence than ball of our trash does in days of future 15 past. seconds i'm actually all set at 45 i've said what I'm okay yes. all right i love that you, anything else you want to add anything else you want to campaign for in your final 15 seconds if i didn't say before but Magneto <laughs> 15... no i'm just sorry but you can say <laughs> <laughs> did i mention magneto scene escape scene i kind of no i did in the last point i did mm -hmm. that was that 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 was like the other one that i had under the like the major scene or whatever like it's, yeah that's an awesome number two but you have a like your the opening scene for x2 is also in the future yeah. very cool again at, at you know outs in, in dc with uh magneto and that whole standoff there very cool as well uh yeah. but it's it's no question that was quicksilver there oh I mean, that's yeah, yeah yeah that's what you think of there's not it's not even it's not even a question but like I, as i was watching i was like oh this opening fight scene it was with getting to see bishop and Colossus gets worked. I will say he gets worked in that movie. He does, but he—I mean, what can he do? He's really—he's just a big met, like metal guy, and he's not even—you know—I I, heard—I don't know how true this is, or if this is just some like fan nerding out here, but I—I could have sworn I saw on Twitter uh, they're asking about the strength between Colossus's steel body, um, the adamantium steel, uh, and and Logan, and the why am I blanking on it? Black Panther? Oh, vibranium. Vibranium, thank you. Uh, and which was the strongest? And I think it went vibranium. Um, now I'm just uh, blank. Adamantium, and then and then Colossus. He's like basically the Tin Man. <laughs> I think that's doing him a little dirty. But I, yeah. but yes, I still agree with. I still agree with that he's the third on that list. But I think it's convenient that the one that's been more prominent in the MCU is number one. Right, yeah. And once we get some more Wolverine love, uh, maybe in the next coming months or so, uh, yeah. that, maybe that changes on the power rankings there. Um, a lot's going to be changing with, you know, we're already seeing it with X Men 97. But, anyways, for sure. I don't want to rob you of your final 30 seconds before we get into our closing arguments here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you get to pick apart um, my arguments and everything for the better villain between these two movies. 30 seconds, Wes. Three, two, one. Yeah, like Nick mentioned, I think the, uh, um, you know, feud, I would say, I just wasted too much time trying to think of that word, between uh, Stryker and Wolverine is the main through line of the uh, X2 X-Men United. Uh, it, it's really, Trask's influence spreads uh, across timelines, ages, generations, you know, so, and his influence is actually what pulls Stryker to continue I've... doing what he's doing, because He's working underneath uh, Trask mm -hmm. in, in Days of Future Past. God, feud, feud, feud. I will say, I if you, I, I'm, I know you didn't have a chance to rewatch this for this argument, but I think you should, like, if you will rewatch, I do want this, to rewatch it soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I do it because I think you'll rewatch this and be like, okay, I can see well because no it, your stance on fastbender versus magneto obviously you think fastbender is the, i mean versus magneto versus yeah Ian McKellen. McKellen. yeah yeah um so you i know you obviously feel like fastbender is better which i can understand that argument any day i'm i like it depends on the day for me you do you feel like ian mckellen like where like I know we talked about it recently, but I'm just curious, like your view on it. Is it like not even close or is it like, no, it's close. It's a conversation. It's why they couldn't, why mm -hmm. uh fastbender couldn't be unrivaled. Right. Cause that's, yes. that's what I was vying for last week. Uh, but after the conversation, right, it's clear he's got a rival there. I think he's, he's a great adaptation, especially because we see 
um, an older Magneto in the comic books and, and the, the animated series. So I think it works in that fashion. But I just think having uh, Fassbender speaks with such like conviction mm-hmm. uh, in, in every role that he does. He, he like commands your attention on screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like a quiet confidence, which I think is, uh, you know, it parallels nicely to um, Magneto. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. It, I, I was uh, okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Shame on me. They're, they're both great. Movie. They're both he's, great. He's in the, he's in another comic book movie too, the the Killer, which is like a French comic. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Have you watched that yet? I don't forget if we mm-hmm. talked about it. You did. I still haven't watched that yet. Shame on me. I, I need to. But, no, it's good. It's not great, but it's good. Um, got it. And it's, and it's a Netflix movie, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, all right. We got uh, 45 more seconds to make a closing argument. I believe I am first on this. Yes. One. Let me pull up the clock here. Uh, reset. 45 seconds. Closing argument starts right now. I I think now, as you guys have heard the whole argument get fleshed out in our thoughts on play by play commentary, that <laughs> you'll see that what where X Men Two is better is not just because it did so much 10 years sooner, but it's much, it's more technically sound in a way in terms of how it tells the story in the characters that it highlights and the development with those characters that we love. Whereas with, with days of future past, it does tell a good story and you do have cool characters, but there's a lot of like little bits and pieces with everything. Whereas we're not sinking our teeth into a lot of different stuff, which those are things that can that translate over time. It doesn't matter when those movies came out. So I, and that is why X2 is the superior X-Men live action movie. God damn. That was right on the nose, Nick. That was great. Wow. Lucked out there. All right. Uh, 45 seconds on the clock, Wes, for you to make your closing argument. Three, two, one. If you love Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, this is the movie for you because X-Men Days of Future Past essentially does what Endgame did uh, before them, maybe like seven or eight years before them. It's, it's paying homage to the original trilogy, which was great in its own right, while advancing their story in their own trilogy and correcting some wrongs that the fans didn't really care for. Again, uh, X-Men 3, The Last Stand, you know, I've been told and, and going through some readings 20. that... Uh, Wolverine Origins also gets retconned. You know, it could even parts of X Men Two uh, could also have been retconned with Famke Jensen appearing at the right. end. You know, maybe that uh, completely uh, gets rid of the uh, uh, Phoenix Saga there completely. So maybe she never even gets possessed by the Dark Phoenix. Fine. So you know, very interesting thing. But while expanding the universe um, and and seeing great mutants with powers. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, that's that's when you don't have the book report finished and you got to go up and present to the class and you're like looking around for words and you're like yeah. uh where and you're like looking on the board trying to find something oh man god damn didn't land that plainly the way it wanted i'm losing this one i feel Dub- like doubles doubles uh size periods in a, yeah, in a, in yeah. One, one and a half inch margins. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. Margins is right. Yes. Margins. I was thinking spacing, but that's. Yeah. That's. Oh, that too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of ways you could do it. But uh, yes. So that concludes <laughs> our um, original versus sequel debate, which it's that is still very much the case. And this is as much as a sequel and sequel. It's original trilogy versus. Exactly. Sequel. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a twist here, you know, but mm. we're all about twisting. We're all about shouting on the Change My Mind podcast. So much so, block your ears because we're about to shout it from the rooftops. It's the Discharge Depot. <laughs> Choo choo bitches. All right, Nick, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, did quite a few things, Wes. All of it pretty much in Portsmouth, New Hampshire over the weekend. Ooh, how um, far of a trip is that for you? That is about a 45-minute drive. Um, okay. And, but we decided to get a little Airbnb stay for the weekend because um, we were celebrating um, – a little bit and uh it was perfect like the place that we got was so nice because we could we were able to just walk around all that downtown area and see everything and even walk into uh kittery maine because there's like a bridge right there in downtown mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it was kind of cool being able to just like oh we'll just it's like adding an extra five minutes to our walk and we'll just go over the border and check it out so sure why not yeah it was a fun time i i love portsmouth new hampshire it is one of my favorite places to visit um i would say in new kind england, of a hidden gem in new england i feel like 
it's yeah. popular, but it's not Portland. You know, it, it's there, there's uh, what what else is right on the coast there in, in New Hampshire? We actually did go into uh, Portland for the last day of it too, just to kind of bounce around. And I, I like Portland, but like it's I don't it's not like yeah, Portsmouth's just. The thing about Portsmouth is you have a whole area that you can walk around in, and it's got a ton of different types of restaurants um, and cute shops and everything too. And I just, but I also love like, I honestly, it's it's like I, I don't know what it is, but I like like kind of the architecture and the vibe and everything of it. So, like all, all old New that. England style. Yeah, it's like it's like it's yes, and it's a city like where obviously you know we have Boston, we have Portland, but they're like where, where it feels like Boston but smaller and just the downtown area. Like, you know, that's primarily where it mm-hmm. gets very different when you it can get different when you get outside of that area. Um, not that it's bad. It's just not the same. So um, yeah. Anyways, I, but yes, there are, um, I mean, I think of, you know, Kittery's obviously a nice town. You got Kennebunk port. That's sure. up in Maine, not too far North of that mm-hmm. York. Um, thinking of Maine, I mean, New Hampshire, Salem is the place that I think. Is of it, there, is it Laconia? Not. Where, where's all the, uh, Laconia is uh, Lake Winnipesaukee or is, that, um, that's due north of me in Salem's more. I mean, Salem. Well, Salem is too, but uh, Portsmouth's towards the um, the coast. I'm Hampton more. Beach? Hampton Beach is there. Yep. Yeah. Hampton Beach is south okay. of in Portsmouth. Yep. Which I don't think I've ever been to Hampton Beach, but Laconia is north of me. I in the, Yeah. Laconia has got some nice spots, um, but also finished season two of Invincible. And um, I, my only gripe was really just, you know, and having the mid season uh, pause, like I get it. That animation is more difficult and everything, but I personally, and I, I really, I think now no one would say they're alone in this after experiencing what we experienced. It's better off to just give it to us weekly like you planned, or if you want to do it all one drop, do not do these mid-season pauses. It just, it doesn't work. I'm not, I've never been, I wasn't a fan of it, Walking Dead, which also Robert. Say, they property. also did that, right? Breaking Bad too, right? Didn't yep. they also do that? And I get it with, like with network television, I can kind of understand it. I don't love it though. But mm-hmm. I, with here with streaming, it very much makes zero sense to me because it's just like you, you set the rules. Like you just yeah. drop it whenever you want to drop it, as far as I know. So I mean, you can't like literally kill all the momentum. Yeah. So it's just so season three, they, it sounds like they've already made a lot of progress. Just whatever progress you like, make sure you make all the progress before you give us anything from that show, from that season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, what about mm-hmm. you, Wes? Ah, uh, well, we celebrated the uh, first birthday of our daughter, Vivian. So uh, that That's was birthday. yesterday as a crow flies, a, a Sunday as a crow flies, you know, so great day. We got we got pretty solid weather, all, you know, a quick passing shower, but we were able to be outside for most of the party. Um, it's great. What, what people don't tell you, though, when you have a kid, especially like a kid this young, you know, they're everyone was great. They brought so many gifts and, and presents and things like that. So. After we cleaned up and everyone had left and we put, put her to bed, like I was exhausted, you know, Mm. I was was about to take a melatonin and then just like conk out in bed Mm. and just be, be dead to the world for the rest of the night. But Jules was like, no, we have to go through and open all the presents and then like mark down who gave us what, like you would at a wedding or something. So you can send out the thank you cards and it's like, Oh yeah. And she's, you have to go through all the presents at this point. And they're not even for you. It's, you know, very sweet, you know, very, very nice thing to open up, but they're not like for you. So you're opening up someone else's presents and you're writing everything down. And then you're, do we want to save the bag? Do you want to save the tissue paper? Do you know, this is nice. Are we saving the wrapping paper? Should I open this easily? There's all these different rules that like I would never consider. Hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of stipulation to it, but that was like, yeah, that was one. Uh, that was the ending of the night that I wasn't anticipating. That's that's uh, good to know for the <laughs> yeah. future. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate yeah, yeah. It. I mean, the, the the party's great. Every you know, the, having all the families come together. Jules's cousins, uh, who all have kids, they, she has three cousins with uh, three, four, five, six, seven kids. You know, uh, in total there, and they're all like under the age of five. So. Mm majority of them were all came down so having all the little rug rats kind of running around the house and everything was awesome um i'm usually not around that energy as being the only child in a small family so his brother was so much older mm-hmm. uh, you know he so that was like i was never around it in many ways it felt like i was an only child growing up you know sure yeah uh, definitely. like all that like family energy I, I loved being at like my friend's house growing up who had like three or four siblings mm-hmm. and kind of like chaotic family energy that's going around the house after school. Like I, I kind of love that stuff. Uh, I'll be probably in small doses. I'm sure that can wear thin pretty quickly. 
Yeah, I would imagine for an only child or someone who like in in a situation like yours, it's like you know, there's just it's it can be fun, but it also can be I can, like I, I know like I know how important a long time is for me, and I grew up with a sibling, so like, I would imagine yeah, like yeah, someone yeah. who's used to being alone. Like, yeah, we had that taken from you. Well, I'm not time. used to being alone, Nick. No, I, I know what you're. I know what you're mm-hmm. saying. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, but yeah, no, it was a great, it was a great time. Yeah, um, good. God, I'm glad that it went well, even though you had to open up all the gifts after. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a big first world problem to have. Well, I mean, I guess that's a fair point too. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that does it. Um, so I want to make sure I give people the proper warning for next week. Uh, will not be same bad time, same bad place. And we'll not be doing video. Make sure you subscribe to the audio channels if you're not already. Yes. We've got something in the works, but you guys know when I do stuff like this on TLDR, I try not to reveal anything till we have it in the hopper so just make sure you have it have your subscribed on an audio channel you'll be all set you'll get it delivered to your listening device and uh we'll just say we're trying to keep the x-men month going yes but in the event that that doesn't happen mm-hmm. i say civil war exit survey okay the a24 movie yep that that, that out this uh i think it came out this past weekend okay so it's out now Okay. All right. All right. Good to know. Cause I gotta, I gotta, see, I saw, you haven't seen it, right? No, no, I haven't. Okay, cool. Um, and even then we can still do that after, um, we can talk. Yeah, about yes. We have that. We have that lined up for, uh, uh the 29th. Cool. And uh, so yeah, one way or the other that that'll get reviewed. We may just bump that up early in the event that things fall through. Right. Okay. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Uh, so until next week, Uh, almost bat time, almost bat place, right?